Heathlands are one of our most threatened habitats and we've lost over 85% of lowland heath in the last 150 years. It's considered rarer than rainforest. Forestry England are working to restore these missing heathlands across the new forest, which will reconnect the landscape and increase biodiversity. So this site here has been restored because it's part of a verderer's enclosure. So the verderer's enclosures were leased to Forestry England in the late 50s, early 60s. And it was a 150 year lease to plant timber on the land with the agreement that it would then go back to Heathland or Woodland, whichever it was before. Forest England have made the radical decision to bring forward all of that restoration and have incorporated into their forest design plan that over the 10 year period will restore nearly 300 hectares of plantation back to Heathland. So once we've removed the trees, the heathland will generally start to recover itself. Heather seedlings will lie dormant in the ground for years and years. And as soon as those trees have been removed and the ground has been disturbed, the seeds are exposed to some sunlight, they will then germinate. The bracken that comes up often creates a really nice microhabitat of shelter and shade and allows these seedlings to get going. And the wildlife then comes in by itself and you'll just see it flourish. My name's Russell Wynne of Wild New Forest and my role in the Heathland Restoration Programme has been to come out and survey these wonderful sites and look at what animals and fungi have been coming back after the conifers were cleared. What we wanted to do was really just see how quickly Heathland specialist animals and fungi had come back onto those sites. And A, that tells us, has the restoration worked? Are, are the Heathland specialists coming back? And B, just how quickly does that process happen? And we hadn't really measured that before in the New Forest. When we came out and did the surveys, it looks like ground zero. It's a bit like a ploughed field, it looks really, really drastic. So I was really pleasantly surprised to find that the first spring after the conifers were cleared, we had woodlarks back, we had night jars back on the sites, stone chat started coming back onto the meadow pipits and with them came lizards and glow worms and bristle tails and slow worms. And these are all species of open ground that wouldn't have been there before the conifers were cleared and they settled in and started breeding really surprisingly quickly these areas. They're open sites, there's a lot of light there. You start getting things like wolf spiders and flies and bees and other insects and straight away that provides food for the woodlark and the nightjar and all they need is an area of bare ground with a little bit of vegetation to nest in and then they've got everything they need to set up a territory and start breeding on the site and that's why those species were able to come in and colonise so quickly. The livestock play an important role in these sites. As soon as you get grass and other plants coming through they come in and start grazing, so they help keep these sites open. Their dung is massively important for boosting biodiversity on these sites. Dung is a really important food source and a habitat for things like dung beetles, flies, and some really rare fungi. And those species started to return on these sites as soon as the herbivores, the ponies and things started roaming around. These sites also come alive at night times. I came out in summer, in the evenings, and, and surveyed each of the three sites over the two years. And it was really interesting. So you see things like the night jar, and you can hear them, you can see them as well in the evening displaying, and that's amazing to see over these sites then coming back on. And then with the bat detector, I was able to hear things like the pipistrels and the serotine bat, and they were particularly feeding around the edges of these sites where they'd been opened up. And then you've got woodland and other habitats around the fringe. Oh, serotine. There, there. There it goes. Oh. So the serotine is a red listed species that occurs quite widely in the forest, but never in big numbers. And I've had it all, all of the heathland restoration sites where I've been surveying. So we've got night jars calling in the background. We've got serotines and common pistol bats flying around it. Really demonstrates that these heaths come around at night time and I wouldn't like to be a moth right now because there's lots of things out here trying to eat me, which is, uh, yeah, great, great to see, really nice. So tonight we are out doing a nocturnal moth survey. So the ones that we're really looking for are heathland and wetland specialists that are indicators that this restoration site is getting into the right condition for those specialist species to reoccupy and move back into the site once the conifers have been cleared. So if you've got a good healthy moth assemblage it's a sign that your ecosystem's healthy and it's going to support lots of your higher species like your birds and your bats, some of your small mammals like shrews and, and things like that.
We understand that initial restoration of heathland is cutting down trees and that can look quite devastating. But we've got to remember that this was heathland before. I think the key message to take across is that the heathland provides so much more structure and diversity than these trees that have been planted here. And that's going to be vital in helping the species that are here to thrive and to continue to thrive in the future. What these surveys have shown that within a year or two, all of those special heathland animals that the new forest is famous for, they're coming back in and using those sites. We're in one of the most biodiverse parts of not just the UK, but lowland Western Europe. And making this place more resilient to climate change and other pressures is only gonna happen if we make it better connected, make the habitats bigger and start connecting up with other landscapes. So this restoration program is a key part of that. And if we don't have good biodiversity, we don't have things like pollinating insects, we're not going to have clean water and all those other services that we rely on from the natural world are not going to be functioning as well as they could be. And if nothing else, the New Forest is one of the biggest tourism destinations in southern England that people want to come and see the wildlife. So again, the restoration programme is just making sure that there's more wildlife for people to see in the future. Being here and restoring sites and then walking back over and seeing the wildlife moving in is really motivating and I'm really lucky to be in here and be doing this kind of work. Restoring heathlands is a long-term project. We can't just restore it and then walk away. We'll have an ongoing programme of management, monitoring, and that might include some scrub clearance. Hopefully the conservation grazing that we have here in the new forest will play a big part of maintaining this habitat as open uh, and we'll create our programme based on what the site needs going forward.